Hi guys and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. Today is Wednesday the 13th of uh, January 2021 and I am so happy that you're joining me today to talk about some knitting. I've been meaning to record for a while and it's just been impossible because this little one here, uh, my four and a half month old, he's been teething. He actually had his first tooth come through yesterday. So it's been tough on all of us. So we're trying to record a little bit differently today and we'll just see how it goes. Um, I don't think this is going to be a long episode, but I just have a couple of things that I wanted to show you. So let's just jump in. Well, first of all, thank you to all of you who are coming back to watch this podcast. And I know that we have quite a lot of new viewers. I don't really know where the sudden rise comes from, but I'm really happy that you're here if you are a new viewer. So I thought I would just very quickly reintroduce myself. Sorry also for swaying around. I'm just pretending to be working around so this one maybe gets some sleep. Um, so like I said, my name is Julia. I'm originally from Germany. So I started this podcast, I think four and a half years ago when I was um, living in Germany with my then boyfriend Kai, who is now my husband. Um, we then filmed for about four years from Munich. I finished uni. I worked for about three years, I think. And then last August, we had this little one. Um, and very quickly afterwards um, moved to the UK, which is where we're living now. Just north of London, essentially, even though London feels very, very, very far away at the moment, because obviously we have not been able to take the train into the city even once, thanks to COVID. Anyhow, this is where we are now. Um, I used to be a psychologist, um, mostly working in sort of like a business context. And now I'm obviously staying home with the little one for now. I am also kind of on the side trying to design some patterns. So I do have some patterns on sale both on Ravelry and Payhip if you're interested. You can find those links underneath the video. And well, I've been knitting for a really long time. I think I've been knitting for about seven years. I never quite know. Um, probably more than seven years actually. I also dabble in crochet. That's actually one thing that I'm really happy about um, my year 2020 is I managed to kind of progress on my crocheting skills. I have tried sewing, but I don't really like it. So I actually returned my sewing machine, which was basically um, my aunt who just lent me her machine for a while. Um, and I spin. I really, really enjoy spinning my own yarn, so I I currently have a wheel that is standing in my craft room, but it's really cold there at the moment, so I'm kind of taking a break, which is really sad, but I do really love spinning, and I just love everything about wool, so I mostly love the woolly yarns, I love spinning woolly yarns, I love knitting with non-superwash woolly yarns, and I think in terms of knitting, I knit pretty much anything. Really, I love knitting garments, I love knitting color work, and I have always loved knitting socks. So those are kind of my main three things that I do. So if you have any questions as to what we are doing here and all of that, please feel free to just ask them. I just wanted to give a very, very quick rundown of who I am, what I do, and essentially what my crafting life is like. All right, so in terms of the podcast, we usually start with some finished objects, but I don't actually have any this time because I am working on a few relatively big projects. So I just wanted to show them to you really quickly, but let's have some coffee first, shall we? And yes, I have taken out all of my Christmas decorations, but my Christmas cups are still in use because I love Christmas cups and Kai, my husband, he would be happy to use Christmas cups all year round, essentially. So there we go. Of course, it's cold coffee because hello, I have a baby and apparently that is what you do. You drink cold coffee. All right, so I have four works in progress that I want to show you today. I think we should start with some socks because those are pretty quick projects and 
Well, I actually was planning to let less socks and focus more on like designs and garments and all of that. But honestly, these last few weeks with this guy have been, they've been lovely, but they've been really, really intense. And I've just realized that more than anything, I need projects that are super mindless and I can just put them down every three minutes if need be. So I've actually come back to knitting socks and I'm really enjoying it. So yeah, I'm just knitting some socks. So I showed you these in my last podcast. Um, this was, was this my New Year's Eve cast on? I think it was. So I, I gifted myself some yarn for Christmas as you do and cast this on, on New Year's Eve. This is a sock out of a sock blank and as you can probably tell I'm just working on the toe decreases now so the first sock is almost done. It's just a plain stockinette sock with a fish lips kiss heel and the sock blank that I'm using is really fun. Um, it's from Felt Fusion who is a UK based um, indie dyer. Her name is Shadow and what I really like about the sock blank is the fact that this first sock is obviously going to be Pretty much entirely purple and then the second sock is going to be blue so i really love both of these colors and i like socks that are not necessarily matchy matchy so yeah i'm quite excited about having a pair of socks with one is blue and one is pa uh, purple it's sort of like this neon pinkish purple i'm not sure how well it is showing up on camera but I really, really like it. And yeah, that is one sock that I have been working on. But like I said, I've just been craving simple projects. So I actually decided to cast on another sock. And this is from Deep Stash. This yarn is by Regia in their perfect design line by Anna and Carlos. This is colorway 9138. And this is one of those yarns where you basically just follow the instructions on the inside of the ball band which tell you to start it is a center pull ball ball so you have to start from the inside of the ball and then essentially you just you know start your cuff change to stockinette do your heel according to the colors as they appear and then you get a sort of fair isle looking sock and the second one will look just exactly the same and yes, I don't have any sock blockers with me right now, I'm sorry. This was very, very much recorded or decided to record on a whim. So here we are. But I have one sock finished and these are going to be the birthday socks for my father-in-law. I usually give my parents-in-law um, socks for Christmas and birthdays because they are really, really knit worthy, which is adorable. Um but this Christmas I just didn't manage so his birthday is in February and I think I should be done with these socks in time so as you can tell they're quite big and um, they have a super long cuff which is interesting I just knit until um, I reach the first stripe and it's a bit longer than I would usually do it but actually having a long cuff is really really nice on socks I find so nothing wrong with that I did a fish lips kiss heel again and yeah, this is the first sock. I do really like the colors, although, I mean, I have knit a lot of socks, um, this kind of socks by Regia, and I find that the quality changes. So sometimes you get these amazing looking pattern socks. And in this case, um, they don't quite look as they should on the label. Like on the label, the colors are much more pronounced and you see more of like a fair eye patterning. Whereas this is more like a willy nilly sort of striping effect, but I don't mind. I, like I said, I have knit quite a lot of these kinds of socks and I just enjoy them because they're so simple yet they just look more interesting than just a plain colored sock and you don't have to change colors um, for contrasting heels and toes. The yarn essentially just does it for you. And especially when I'm gifting socks to family and friends, I do like to use these sort of more commercial sock yarns because they're just really foolproof to wash um, and they will last forever. So yeah, the first sock is done and I will have to cast the second one on pretty soon because otherwise I will get second sock syndrome and also I have to calculate that shipping to Germany might take a while with how things are going at the moment. So 
yeah, I should probably get a move on with these. All right, now let's talk about the sweaters that I really came on here to talk to you about today because I'm just so excited about both of them and one of them is at a point where I thought it would be really interesting to share it on the podcast. Um, so where should we start? Let's start with my Vanna sweater. Um, the Vanna pullover or sweater is a um, design that you can only knit if you buy the um, kit from Kit Couture. So I talked about that last week or last time I recorded Kit Couture. Sorry, that was my draw. But what they do is, um, this is the brand, it is a company from Denmark. And they basically design knitted and possibly also crocheted um, garments and accessories. And then they sell you the instructions only as a kit with all the yarn and any anything and everything that you need for the pattern. So I am making the Vanna pullover, which I'm not sure why they printed. <laughs> they just printed like a plain sweater on front, whereas this is a all over colorwork garment. But what it is essentially is an all over colorwork garment with this patterning. So we have this pattern throughout the entire sweater and like as you can see both of the sleeves are completely knit in yellow and then you also knit the body in the same color and then for the yoke it actually turns into like a black and white design which i really like so there's a couple of different color choices with different colors for the bottom of the sweater but the top i think is always uh, black and white which should be really really lovely and you guys i have finish the two sleeves which makes me so 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 happy um this was um my husband's christmas gift to me i had told him exactly what i wanted and he is a good husband and got me the yarn um so i cast on i think on either christmas day or boxing day and i was quite worried about this in the beginning because this is quite intense i think it's like a 40 or 45 row chart and it is knit at a 29 stitch gauge which is really really tight so i knit both of these sleeves actually on sock needles i used 2.5 millimeter needles to get gauge but that just depends on how tight you knit um so yeah in the beginning i was quite worried because this took a lot of time and a lot of concentration but i did really get into it and the chart and the increases and everything became a lot more intuitive to me, so I actually really enjoy knitting the second sleeve. So now these two sleeves are done, I will have to pick up again from the bottom um, and do this sort of double um, cuff um, for my uh, the body of my sweater, which I am dreading. I'm looking forward to the color work, but it's going to be like a million stitches on tiny needles and doing the sort of double rim, uh, brim. I'm not super excited about it, but whenever I have time and focus and energy to actually count a lot of stitches, I will then start the body, knit up the body to the same point, and then this will all be joined together and knit into the yoke. So that is one thing that I've been working on. And then, more excitingly, let me close this drawer, and sorry in advance if it makes funny noises. Um, I have been working on the sweater that I am basically just designing by myself. And this is it. And I will explain this in a second. But the backstory is that I decided to do a tier 4 cast on. And very quickly, we have a tier system here in the UK, different tiers for different sort of risk assessments and measures uh, relating to the coronavirus. And we've been in all the tiers now. <laughs> Let's not comment on that anymore, but we're in tier five now. Um, last time a podcast, the highest tier was tier four. Before then, it was tier three. Things change. Essentially, we're in lockdown and... We entered tier four just before Christmas, which was really, really sad and obviously the right thing to do, but still kind of, well, it, I think a lot of people were down about it. So I started this thing on Instagram called the tier four cast on, 
where we all decided to just cast on some colorful projects that made us happy. And this is what I decided to cast on. So I had different 50 gram stains of Tuku wool. So all of these colored um, sections are Tuku wool, which is a Finnish yarn. And I'm also using a cone of Jameson and Smith in this gray. And essentially I just cast on a massive tube and made up some color work as I went. So I basically knit this color work tube up to where I decided I would have the sleeves. So then for the sleeves I added some steaks. And if you don't know what steaks are, a steak is where you essentially you knit and then later you will, I will cut up this piece of knitting. I will reinforce it possibly with some crochet. You can also reinforce it with a knitting technique or with um, sewing. Anyways, you reinforce those stitches and then later I will cut this open. So this stick and this stick will be for the sleeves. And the advantage of doing this is that you have to, or you can keep knitting in the round. So with color work, a lot of people, myself included, don't like or don't know how to knit color work flat, where you have to purl the stitches. So it is much easier to just add in those sticks and I also find it really fun to cut my knitting actually. So I added in some armhole sticks and then very excitingly I also added in a stick for the neckband. And I have never done a stick for the neck but essentially I bound off um, quite a few stitches so there will be like a flat sort of round neck opening. And then I also did some decreases along the stick. So again, I will cut this up and then I should hopefully have a nice round neckline where I will then pick up the stitches and finish it off with some ribbing. So this is where we are at the moment. Um, I also, yeah, I am totally just making all of this up by the way. I also added some short rows. So I'm not sure if you can see in the gray here. I added some short rows because this is a quite boxy sweater. It's going to be a little bit oversized. So I didn't want the shoulders to just kind of be straight. I wanted them to be shaped just a tiny bit. So I added some short rows and then this morning I bound off. I joined the front and the back together using a three needle bind off. So, so far this has been completely seamless. And I just thought this is such an interesting stage of this garment. I really would like to document this on my channel because this could go very, very well or it could go very, very wrong. No one really knows. I mean, I have done some rough calculations as to how many stitches to cast off before doing the stick and how many stitches to decrease because I do, of course, want a neckline that fits over my head. Um, but really, with all of this, of course, I can't try it on. So I haven't tried this on ever since this point. And only when cutting this thing open, I will really know if it fits, how it fits and all of that. So it's going to be really, really interesting. I am relatively confident that this should work out. And if it does, I'm going to be so excited. And I have plans for like... 10 more sweaters that I can then design myself and it would be so fun. But who really knows? Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So I think next, the next thing that I'm going to do is definitely cut open this front stick because then I can kind of get an idea of the neckline, which is the most important part. Everything else, the, um, the armhole sticks, I'm not really too worried about. Essentially, I'm just going to cut those open and then what I'll do is I will finish them off with grey sleeves. So the sleeves and all of the ribbing will be in grey, which I think will kind of tie this garment together, which is, of course, very, very colourful. So yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about it all, but I think it should be okay. In terms of the colour work pattern, I just basically made these things up as I went along, which was really, really fun. Um, especially with a baby, sometimes I find it easier to just pick this up and make something up rather than pick up my knitting, find my place in my pattern, follow a chart. 
So while this may sound more complicated, if you're a newer garment knitter, I actually personally found it quite easy and definitely very, very enjoyable. So yeah, we'll see how it goes, but this is where we are right now. Um, and I am guessing it'll be quite interesting next time I podcast to see how this will have progressed. So yeah, that is where we are and that is mainly why I wanted to podcast today even though I had a moody baby because yeah, it's just, I think the, inst the construction is most easily explained with all of the sticks still in there and everything is going to change quite dramatically once I cut this open. All right. So you guys, that has basically been my knitting for these last two weeks or so. I've also been doing a bit of crochet, but I forgot to bring it over. I'm still working on my advent blank blanket, which is the Neat Ripple Blanket by Addict24. Um, yeah, again, I just found that sometimes when watching a lot of news, which I have been so sad and so shocking and... Yeah, just generally not happy news. I need a simple project and so I've been adding a mini or two into my blanket every now and then, which has been very, very relaxing and comforting. Um, so yeah, this is it for the knitting talk. If you do want to stick around, I might just talk a little bit about what's been happening because baby is actually sleeping, so why not? But if you're only here um, to listen to Yarny and Knitting Talk, that is absolutely fine. But I will just see you again next time. If you do want to stick around, well, what's been happening is more or less more of the same. So obviously we are still in lockdown and the numbers here in the UK, especially uh, in this part of the UK, are just crazy, crazy high and very, very worrying in terms of the NHS and of course just the health of a ton of people so we have been very very careful and basically only staying at home except for quick walks um, and then we go for walks in areas where there are not many people um, so yeah that is basically what we've been doing we've been ordering as much as possible online and <clears throat> trying to limit the occasions where we would have usually just you know pop down to the shops really quickly for two or three things we are just staying inside which is being made a little bit easier by the fact that we have terrible weather as well <laughs> we have such british weather at the moment it is just it is raining and raining and raining and raining and it's sort of weird drizzle that just it's just wet everywhere but on the more positive side, um, I've talked in the past how this house which we are renting, I, I love it. It's a beautiful, beautiful house. It's actually proper old. It's an Edwardian house with some extensions. But being an old house and a house that has been extended, it has some issues which we've been battling for a while. Um, most excitingly, we might maybe hopefully be getting our roof fixed soon because we do have a leaky roof, which is not fun, especially in this weather. <laughs> um, luckily or unluckily, depending on how you want to look at it, um, as this house has had at least two extensions, both of which are quite old, um, the leak in the roof is only affecting our bathrooms, which it's not fun to have wet walls and bathrooms, but at least we don't have the baby in the bathroom most, most of the time, so I'm not really too worried about it. But we might be getting all of that fixed, which is very, very exciting. I think it's quite a big job. So we've had different roofers come around and climb on top of our roof. And thankfully our landlords are really, really good at trying to fix everything. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it, even though, of course, it'll be... It'll be interesting and possibly quite disruptive, but yeah, having a dry roof and a dry house should be nice. And in case you are worried, I know that some people were worried last week or last time I recorded when I said that part of a house is also quite cold. 
don't be worried um we have a beautiful warm living room which is where i am recording right now and where i usually hang out with baby and also thankfully it is getting a little bit warmer we had some quite cold temperatures and now yeah we are all well we are all safe and healthy and warm and dry and if it sounds like our house is falling apart then most of the time it really isn't it is absolutely fine um yeah i think that is pretty much all i have to talk about because essentially my life consists of taking care of the baby and knitting and you know figuring stuff out in the house so we've been just doing really small jobs around the house the really fun parts actually like ordering photos and framing them and putting them up. I have a couple of ideas of like tiny decoration things that I want to do still, which is really, really fun. Um, I think that is the fun part of moving when you're past the boxes and the big jobs and you're properly just like decorating. And I've been playing with my plants and putting some candles up and stuff like that, which is making this place really nice and cozy. Um, funnily enough, um, we actually by mistake got delivered 25 kilos of sunflower seeds the other day. It's a long story how that happened, but we had 25 kilos of them and we were wondering what to do about that, kind of freaking out because it was just this massive, massive sack of sunflower seeds that weren't safe for us to eat. So I assume that they are meant for bird feed. But what are we going to do with 25 kilos and we have no real place to store it um i didn't want to put um, all of that in our shed in the garden because i don't want to attract mice or rats or anything like that but so we have now actually got a really nice bird feeder and i've been filling it up and for the first couple of days no bird was seen but today for the first time I think the birds discovered our bird feeder, so that is really, really nice. And also our neighbor, who is lovely, he's been doing a lot of like the plumbing jobs in our house. And they have chickens, so they have decided or found out that the chickens apparently really like the sunflower seeds. So we have done a good deed and fed the chickens, and it's really, really cute to see them munching on our sunflower seeds. and. Most importantly, we don't have 25 kilos of them standing around in our house anymore, which is really good. Especially because at some point those 25 kilos were living in my craft and yarn room and I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. Anyways, that was just a really, really random story. Sorry if you were not interested in that at all. But that's what has been going on and I don't see any changes <laughs> coming anytime soon. We are in this tier 5 lockdown until at least the middle of February and who knows what will happen after that. So we are essentially just staying inside, staying cozy and I have decided to just embrace what it is. So I'm not stressing out about anything anymore. I'm essentially just hanging around at home and we are safe we are healthy so we have nothing really to complain about so i hope that wherever you are you are also staying safe and healthy i hope that you and your families are doing well i am so glad that you joined me today to talk about some knitting and then also listen to random random rambles about things that are happening so thank you so much for stopping by i hope you have a good week I hope you have some crafting to keep you happy and occupied and until I see you again, thank you so much for watching, happy knitting, bye!